Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. We are here, it's the hangover from the England defeat, but I'm delighted to be joined by Stephen Kuntru. Tell me how I'm pronouncing that right. It was Kunturu. Kunturu from uh, yes. Hellas Footy. Uh, he's joined us once again. Stephen was on with us before on the channel previously when we played Greece and gave us the lowdown on the Greek team then. And uh, I must say, a lot of what he said actually played uh, true, and the, especially the away game. But uh, we got Stephen on again, and we're delighted to have him on. Uh, he's fresh from a 3 0 win over Finland. So, Stephen, I suppose um, you're probably in a lot. Better mood than me and Irish fans uh, today. Yes, generally pleased with the win. You know, it, we didn't start out so great in the match. You know, we we had to have kind of an error from the goalkeeper, the Finnish goalkeeper, for us to go ahead in that match with Ioannidis. And up from that point, we were on top. There's, the lineup was a strange one. Our new manager, Ivan Jovanovic, we kind of expect him to blood some of the youngsters or and slash players who weren't really given an opportunity under Gus Poyet, who has who left uh, after the playoffs against Georgia, which we'll probably get into in a bit. And yeah, surprising lineup, more experienced, but a bit of a safe bet with some of these players who probably should be phased out of the national team by now. But look, end of the day, we got a 3-0 win and I was generally pleased with how we got it. And I expect to see like the, the likes of Christos Solis and Zafires and some of the younger players starting to come in a bit more now as well, we hope. Yeah, um, I suppose you're, you're obviously, it seems to be a bit of a theme in this Nations League so far. I've got England with a new manager, Ireland with a new manager and uh, Greece for the for the Nations League, I suppose. Talk to me about Gus Poyet and kind of a lot of Irish fans wanted him involved. Uh, we spoke a, bit, a little bit off air there. You were kind of saying how he's only started to kind of use his Instagram again when he was playing last night and kind of made it about himself. Uh, so talk to me a bit about that before we kind of get into, uh, I suppose, from the Greeks' point of view against Ireland. Yeah, so I, I said to you before we start recording, Gus Poyet is, look, I, I, I was, when, when Poyet was manager, it was more of a kind of, I was, on a fen I was very much offensive with Poyet. A lot of people either really liked him or really, really didn't like him. And, and so I was kind of willing to give him a chance. And, Granted, he did get, uh, get us to the playoff final of the Nations League where we played Georgia set and we went out on penalties. And a lot of that was uh, his him was it was his was his fault. Like he didn't pick some of our most informed players. He brought in players who weren't even playing first team football for their clubs. And, you know, it may not have made a difference in, in the end because we did go out on penalties, but we were the better team on paper against Georgia, despite the fact they have Kravets Kelia, who's an excellent player in, you know, plays for Napoli, et cetera, et cetera. But yeah, that was that. It, if you feel a hangover after last night's game, imagine how we felt we, when we bombed out of the Euros. We, we so thought we'd be there uh, in Germany. And, and it was so sad to see another tournament where I had to sweepstake a team so that I could have someone I vaguely followed <laughs> to see how far they could get. And we're yeah. used to that, to be fair. But anyway... <laughs> Yes, but I, in, honest, in all honesty, you guys dodged a bullet with, with not getting Gus Poya. I know it's not started so great for you guys considering the result against England, but he, he he's using he's used us as his C, as a, for his CV to show he's, he's got a decent win rate with Greece, don't get me wrong, it, but he hasn't actually got us to a major tournament. And so he, he was posting on his Instagram story last night. It's probably still up. You can see it. Like He was showing kind of like the – I think it was the different – uh attendances of greece games from when he first started to when like before he left you know the, the playoff semi-final against kazakhstan when we won five nil and then now at, at gare skanky last night where it was pretty packed out and he was like this is the difference that i basically saying this is the difference i've made as manager of greece previously i'm like get out man like you, you didn't qualify us for anything like why are you taking credit for something that sure like we, we looked, we started to improve a bit under him. We had some good players, but at the end of the day, he's one of the big reasons why we didn't reach the Euros. So don't take credit for something that you didn't do in, in the game last night Who <laughs> under, with Ivan Jovanovic being the manager um, and using that to kind of big yourself up for your next job. Because at the end of the day, you didn't, he didn't succeed. He, the reason why the Greek Football Federation didn't renew his contract is because he didn't reach his target of qualifying for the European Championships. So his win rate means nothing. He could have a terrible win rate. If he won Georgia, they won two games in their European qualifiers, but they reached the European Championships because on the night in the playoffs, they deserved it on pen and won on penalties. So it doesn't matter. Win rates don't matter. If you reach the Euros, that's what counts. 
Yeah, I think that's we're in a similar situation now where we need to just, you know, forget about nice football or, you know, we just need to start being horrible, resolute and winning games and seeing games through. And obviously we played against England and I think 2-0 might flatter us a little bit yesterday. It could have been a lot more other than Cuevin Keller made, you know, seven saves and, you know, some really, really big saves at times as well. And we almost looked a little bit lost like we did against you. That I, I kind of reference more so the game away from home where we just looked totally lost against you. But uh, yeah, look, I suppose we'll get into this game and uh, off air, you, you told me you're kind of feeling a little bit kind of more nervous than you would have been previously with a new manager coming in who who ultimately hasn't kind of got a grip on his squad yet. It's largely been John O'Shea and Paddy McCarthy who have um, been the ones kind of orchestrating this camp. Definitely uh, the first game, not just so sure about the second game, but definitely it was all over the TV and he came out and said in his press conference after the game, Hal Grimson yesterday, saying that like he hopes going forward that he'll have kind of more, uh, not he said authority, but I think that's the wrong word just because he's, he, he, it's not his first language. I think he more probably meant more knowledge of the team. So he knows what to expect from, from the team rather than authority because obviously he's the manager, so he would have the most authority. So I think he used the wrong word there, but that's kind of where we are at. We... we I think going with a back five is just the wrong thing going forward because we're given, you know, Greece or England or any other uh, opposition the numerical advantage in terms of why are we having an extra defender in there when we could probably have an extra midfielder in there who could probably sit. And that's probably what we have kind of lacked a little bit is we've had five defenders as in a 3-5-2, but it's largely been a back five because they just don't get high enough uh, and they're just not quick enough to get, you know, so high. And usually we're kind of... Um, held back against uh, better teams and I think Greece did a good job against, uh, against us previously but has there been any sort of kind of change in setup or change in tactics with the Jovanovic coming involved it's it's still a really it's still he's still such a new quantity in uh, for the national team we know how he uh, from from his time at Panathinaikos where he played you know second biggest club in Greece second most coveted team we kind of have an idea we kind of had an idea of how he'd play and the style he would want to implement going into managing Greece. He mostly plays 4-3-3, also does 4-2-3-1, like we saw last night. Very solid kind of team. It makes them very, sets them up very good defensively. Um, nothing hugely flashy, but, you know, it's still a decent brand of football to watch. You know, it's, it's, not, it's nothing groundbreaking, but that's what we need to be. We need to be solid and effective. And he was very, and his teams are very efficient as well. And I know it's quite a niche thing to maybe bring up but he he managed Cypriot side Abuel who are perennial champions quite consistently in Cyprus he took them to the Champions League quarterfinals in 2011-12 which was a absolutely unprecedented achievement for any club from Cyprus you know Cyprus is a small island just over a million people back and that squad back in 2011-12 I think it was worth less than a million euros so like that was one of the biggest achievements he's ever had in his career so you know bringing that kind of long-term experience to Greece. He's he's played in Greece as well. He, he's Serbian ethnically, but, you know, he, he speaks Greek fluently. He speaks Greek very well as well, better, way better than ever I ever have. Um, and he's managed multiple Greek clubs. Like I said, managed in Cyprus too, where the main language is Greek. So it, he knows the culture and he knows the players well as well. You know, particularly the ones he managed at Panathinaikos a couple uh, season or so ago. Um, and so... Yeah, he'll he'll have a good feel of the team, and that's why I'm actually nervous getting going into this game because you have a new manager too, but we have a new manager, and I just hope that you know there's still some teething going on in that team, particularly with the lineup we saw last night. I hope that we kind of start to transition those younger players in from the ones that probably shouldn't have been called up. But I get it; there are some positions where we lack depth, particularly midfield. So, but I'm just hoping now we kind of start to see these really talented players coming through under. Under Jovanovic. Yeah, well, I suppose it's just kind of touching on that because we know Bakasetas was was the big player to kind of watch out for. And um, he said last time, I think he ended up scoring, but he was definitely uh, a huge player for you in that game and we just couldn't seem to deal with him. But um, is there any of the younger lads that's coming through now who, you know, that Ireland should watch out for or the fans should watch out for in, in that respect? The, there's a couple. I mean, at centre-back, you have... Um, Gonsandinos uh, Gulliarakis, that's his name. He was at Bauk, very talented centre-back, recently transferred to Wolfsburg. He has an eye for a goal, interestingly, from set pieces, so he's one to watch. 
uh, in that position. Uh, in midfield, you have Yanis Gonsandelias, who's still currently a Balk, very talented kind of attacking midfielder, can play on the wing as well. Uh, Christos Zathires, also in midfield, probably more of a slightly deeper midfielder. Um, he's Norwegian as well, but he, uh, the Greek Football Federation and uh, Jovanovic made an absolute effort to bring him kind of into the fold. He got his debut yesterday coming off the bench. Um, Christos Zollis, who had an amazing time in the second Bundesliga last year with Dusseldorf, is now at Club Bruges, had a really good start there. Really, really talented, Can, has a good eye for a goal. And uh, the big one up top, who's we finally have a definitive striker, thank goodness. We have like four or five strikers. We haven't had that kind of striker depth in a long time that are playing really good for their clubs and at a high level. But the one who's started to consistently score for his nation, as well as his club, is Fodis Ioannidis, who's at Banathanaigos. He's 24 years old. Uh, he's, he was linked with Leicester City, I believe Southampton as well in the transfer window. But Banathanaigos were very insistent. They wanted nothing less than 30 million euros for him. Uh, I think it was Ipswich Town as well. All of the newly promoted sides were linked with him and uh, they they didn't budge on selling him this summer. So he's he's one to... He, they're the kind of like new crop, new generation that are going to come through and hopefully uh, start, start to get us to qualify consistently for tournaments. Because I, I know it's been a long time. Well, it's not been as... Actually, it's not been as long for, for Republic of Ireland as it's been for us. It's been since 2014 we haven't qualified for a major tournament. So it's going to be 12 years if we can even reach the World Cup in US, Canada and Mexico. Yeah, well, I think 2016 feels like such a long time ago. Add two years to that as well. Um, <clears throat> because we feel starved already and it's only been since 2016, which is like eight years ago now. Um, you've been waiting a decade. But... Um, I suppose from our point of view, like we don't have any. Look, Jake O'Brien has just signed for Everton, but he hasn't been getting a look in. He signed from Leon. That's probably been the big transfer uh, in terms of um, monetarily, because that was about eighteen million euros. But uh, Sammy Smodix has joined Ipswich. Dar Roche has joined Ipswich, and and Chiodozio Bene. So the three of them have joined Ipswich Town, um, which is a good move for them, and hopefully they can stay in the Premier League. But. Uh, I was just looking around last night. Like we need players like Robbie Brady out of the team. I think uh, Matt Doherty as well, probably out of the team. But with Seamus Coleman now looking like he's injured, I'm not so sure that um, that Matt Doherty will come out because if uh, if Seamus uh, isn't fit, then we don't really have too much depth in, in those uh, wing back positions. I probably would have liked to have seen Liam Scales play. He's at Celtic and he's he's done really well at Celtic. There he won the league last year or won the double actually, just won the cup too. But uh, he's had a good season there at Celtic and he's naturally left footed, so he could be someone that we could be looking at potentially playing there. But ultimately, I don't see too much changes to the side because I think that's the kind of way that Ireland will set up. It'll probably be a midfield three, um, with uh, Malumbi. Whoever he decides to kind of put beside him, Smallbone, who had a bad game against Greece before, uh, away from home. But I think w the time when we played just last, I don't think um, in in Greece, I don't think it was a kind of re fair reflection because so many players had been not playing in terms of this, the championship season that ended and the Premier League se season had it ended, but not as long as the championship season. So a lot of our players were uh, were struggling, uh, I'd say, one with the heat and two with the uh, fitness as well. But uh, that's not to take anything away from, from Greece. They were absolutely outstanding uh, that night. But I do think that we will need to be kind of more in control of uh, possession. We need to be a lot more composed in possession as well, um, which we are not good at in midfield. And ultimately, we don't have Josh Cullen in there, who's normally the one that sits in that pivot role and uh, receives the ball off the defence and tries to kind of get us playing. But he's out. Uh, Jason Malumbi's not that type of player because he's not... Well, he is a good player, but he's more all-action midfielder than a sit-in and being disciplined. Um, and at times, sometimes can get a bit carried away with the game. Like, he sometimes let his emotion get the better of him. And um, so, naturally, we don't actually have that pivot in midfield. Um, what what Malumbi is good at is getting the ball and kind of bring us up further up the pitch. So he's actually better utilized in a kind of more forward position than say a Josh Cullen, and more so maybe in a position where Will Smallbone is. But Will Smallbone is more technically uh, gifted uh, in that sense, so he doesn't tend to do that much tracking back because he he tries to affect the play going forward. But I still think he needs uh, to do a lot more 
to be consistently considered in the starting eleven. Still a good player, but I think he needs to do more. And then up front, Adam Eda, I think he didn't really show himself in a great light yesterday. Um, was isolated a lot of times, but uh, didn't really look... Uh, I don't want to say he didn't look interested, because that's the wrong word, but he just... He struggled at times against Harry Maguire and Mark Gray. Uh, and look, I think most people would as well because they are two solid defenders. Um, obviously, Gray, he had a really good Euros and Harry mm-hmm. Maguire has been a, a seasoned kind of veteran at this stage in terms of international and uh, Premier League. And he's been a former Manchester United captain. And uh, I think he's captained England a few times in the past as well. And he's played in uh, big tournaments and he's played in finals and stuff like that. So I think when you have Adam Eade, who's still only quite a young lad, uh, up against these types of seasoned uh, pros with experience, I think they're going to struggle. And that's the problem we have at the moment is a lot of our players are quite young and we don't have anyone who's kind of got that experience on board other than maybe a Seamus Coleman or a Matt Doherty. But otherwise, it's a very kind of inexperienced squad. Now, they are gaining experience on the job uh, at international level, but a lot of them um, are at clubs that are kind of lower end Premier League or Championship kind of... Um, level they're not like superstars and i'm not saying that greece have superstars or anything like that and um, but they're what greece are are a really well-oiled machine and a really good team i think that's what hog Wimson wants to get to is to turn the team into a real kind of team to fight for one another and when they have really good performance it's like a, a performance by everybody in the team not just one like a magic moment yeah, and I, I, you, I've, I kind of echo what you say about Greece. Uh, we, you know, we don't have genuine superstars, but what we do seem to have, and what we've started to see over the mo- more recent times, is team uh, players starting to go to Europe's top five leagues, or at least being the, in like the top clubs of their specific leagues. You know, uh, and and what Jovanovic has really emphasised, which you know is is a positive, is you have to play consistently for your club to get into the national team. Now, there are a couple of ex- exceptions, you know, of the sales for Lacovimos, who transferred to Nottingham Forest last season, didn't really play much considering they had like four or five goalkeepers kind of rotating at that and that time. He's now at Newcastle, not likely to start because Nick Pope is obviously the starter there. And Gostad Zimikas, again, Andrew Robertson's ahead of him at Liverpool and he doesn't get as much game time, but Schlott has been willing to kind of bring him on as a substitute in, in recent fixtures, despite many of us at Hellas Football and also um, online, people are kind of saying, right, you kind of need to get a move if you're not going to get a, be a starter, despite it, you know, being Liverpool's a massive club. We appreciate that. And Robertson's a massive player, but Zimikas is important for the for the national Well, team. we're the same with Kelleher because he's obviously behind Alisson. Yes. You know? So I, yes. I know what you mean. But but thankfully, we, you know, we, we do have a lot of players who are, st- who are more or less nailed on starters for their team. You know, Mavrobanos is playing at a high level at West Ham. He's more or less a first team player for for them. Um, looking at, you know, it's particularly in the Greek Super League, a lot of the players that are that are called up are starters. And I think there's, you know, that there credit to I will give some credit to Poet. He did create a bit of a camaraderie. He did kind of generally pick the same players who were in form you know, of his favourites that, you know, and they, they, that group has stayed together. And I think that night in Georgia against Georgia, when we went out on penalties, that it must have been a massive wake up call for them. We hope it is because I th- hope that they take that experience of going out on penalties in a game that they, you know, not saying we deserve to go through. We could, we very much could have on the, uh, you know, on a, if, if that game had been replayed. But I hope that that experience kind of strengthens them and pushes them further to try and qualify for the World Cup. That's the aim. Epo and the Greek Football Federation, I should say. And, uh, and Jovanovic have set a very straightforward aim. That's that's it. Qualified for the World Cup. There's no excuses this time. No, you know, Greece have a good enough team to reach that tournament, particularly now that it's been expanded. And particularly that if we get top two in our Nations League group, that means that we get into the playoffs. So re- like last time, irregardless of what happens in the qualifiers, we should uh, get to the playoffs, you know, albeit we, we can beat Finland again and beat you guys twice. And England, you know, not necessarily a free hit, but we'll see what happens at Wembley and we'll see what happens at uh, the Athens Olympic Stadium when we play them. Uh, I believe towards the end of this year is when we play the reverse fixture. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's going to be it's gonna be an interesting one uh, to see. Well, I suppose we usually end these on um, score prediction, as you know. Um, are you optimistic 
for this result there, what's what's your score prediction? Yeah, I'm I'm reasonably optimistic, I'd say, because one because of how we played, one be- uh, last night, despite the team that we have put out. Two because of Jovanovic, you know, he's a he's not just a co- he's not just a manager, he's a coach, which I, I guess sounds a bit redundant, but he's very tactically apt, which hmm. is something I don't necessarily would say about Poyet. Poyet can get certain a bit of certain things out of his players, but I don't think he has the kind of now to take them to that next level, as we saw in the playoffs, uh, which I won't mention again, hopefully. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm confident that we have the tactical now that will play a similar game that we did against Finland. I'd like to see a couple of additions to the team. You know, like I said, Zolis on the wing has to start for me because of how good, how much, how good he started at Club Bruges and previously in Germany. I'm going to say because there's still a bit of teething maybe with Jovanovic, new manager. I'd, I'm going to say two one to Greece. It's, I think we'll concede, but I think you'll give us a good game away from home. But I'm going to say narrow win for us. Yeah, I, I, I don't know why, but the every time I've been. Talking about Ireland lately, I've just been going for one-one draws. Um, I think that's the best we, we can get at the moment. Uh, I I don't think we're going to be as open as we were against England, and I hope that we can learn, learn from our mistakes. And if we can do that and maybe take an early lead, then uh, I think we'll we'll try to take the the game to Greece. And I think ultimately by the end of the game, I think Greece will uh, will pile on the pressure and probably get that goal. And um, that's how I see it going. But I could be totally wrong. You know, you could beat us three 0 you know, we might actually win. You just never know with Ireland and you probably feel the same way about Greece. But look, at either way, it seems as though it's going to be an interesting game and it's probably um, a fresh look at both sides considering, you know, we'd seen them play against each other before and you've got the better of us and we're the better team in both games. Um, so I'm just hoping that Ireland can learn from mistakes previously and uh, hopefully it's a it's a good game. So may the best team win. Um, I suppose, Stephen, is you want to tell people where they can find uh, your channel, or whether your podcast and your site and stuff like that. So uh, if they want to follow you, that uh, you just give the right social so I don't mess it up. Yes, absolutely. And just before I do mention that, I want, I keep thinking, oh, are Greece going to become your new Denmark where we play you like every year or so? Because it, We it's hate now, Denmark. Now it's like four times, ta- it's going to be four times in two years. So we might meet each other in the qualifiers for the World Cup again. Who knows? If, imagine, if that happens, I'll, I will genuinely laugh. But um, yeah, so m- me personally, my socials are at Steve Conturu. So that's spelled K-O-U-N-T-O-U-R-O-U for my surname. So you can find me on Twitter and on Instagram. I mostly post my articles and the weekly Hellas Football podcast on there. And uh, the Hellas Football socials is at Hellas Footy. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and X, formerly known as Twitter. And like I said, weekly Hellas Football podcast is on Spotify, Apple Music, any podcast platform you listen to. We're probably on that. So give it a listen if you're interested to learn more about Greek football, which is the gift that keeps on giving because it's crazy for the better or for worse. <laughs> There's a lot of similarities between Ireland and Greece that you, you wouldn't even think. And uh, you talked about the playoffs earlier uh, and George uh, George is scarring you. We, we are still scarred from that Denmark game where we got beat 5-1. So we know exactly how you feel uh, regarding that. But uh, listen, Stephen, thanks so much for your time. Uh, it's hugely appreciated. And uh, thanks for all your knowledge on the game as well. So hopefully it is a great game. And hopefully, um, well, hopefully one of us is smiling by the end of it. But uh not gloating anyway um yes. yeah guys if you like this video don't forget to drop a like on the video don't forget to subscribe and check out steven's other stuff on hellas 40 as well we'll talk to you all soon thanks for watching